let's have a productive day, shall we? But first, a word from today's sponsor, Book of the Month. If you didn't know already, Book of the Month is a super fast growing online bookish surface, perfect for readers such as you and I. And what they offer is that every single month, their team selects a curated list of books that you can choose from. And that way you can spend less time researching and more time reading the books that you care about. Plus, Book of the Month actually just launched a podcast, which is called Virtual Book Tour. You can listen to it on Apple or Spotify, and it is actually hosted by two members of Book of the Month's editorial team, Brianna Goodman and Jared McFarlane. The podcast is actually recorded in front of a live audience at the Book of the Month headquarters in New York City. The Virtual Book Tour gives a look into the mind of our favorite writers, the ones that we admire so much, and it is also a treasure trove full of anecdotes, wisdom, and of course, fun. Until so far, the team has interviewed six authors, such as Chelsea Abdullah, who is the author of The Stardust Thief, which I'm so excited to pick up. Sounds like such a cool book. And also Kali Fajardo Anstein, the author of Woman of Light. Again, you can listen to Book of the Month's new podcast, Virtual Book Tour on Apple and Spotify. A link will be in the description box down below. And besides that, I also got two of my most exciting picks for July, which I will show you right now. So thank you so much, Book of the Month, for sending me these books. The first one that I chose is Upgrade by Blake Crouch. Logan Ramsey learns the hard way that sometimes evolution can be a real downgrade if you're not careful. And a really popular new release that has been getting a ton of buzz is actually Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow <laughs> by Gabrielle Zavin. This moving story of friendship and art making will have you nostalgic for your favorite childhood video games. And I personally adore video game themed books. I need to read more and I will definitely pick up this one for that. Do know that Book of the Month only ships internationally. And if you do want to get a subscription to their wonderful service, you can use my code Sabine to get your first Book of the Month book for just $9.99, which is an absolutely great deal. A link will also be in my description. And don't forget to listen to their virtual book tour podcast. Now let's continue on with this productive day. I woke up at like 8.15 this morning and then of course I went on TikTok first. I feel like this is relatively early for a Sunday morning, but we gotta do the studies today. And I have a couple of other errands that I need to do. But first, let's get semi-dressed. I want it to be casual and make some breakfast and read the book that I'm currently reading. I forgot to buy new old yesterday, but luckily I have enough oat milk to make exactly one cup of coffee, so I'm kind of blessed, but I also hate that I forgot. Hi, okay, so I hate how this looks on my shirt. I also changed into this t-shirt because my sweater was too hot. This t-shirt is also so cute. My new absolute fave. It's made by Lynn. She is literally, I think, my favorite YouTuber. So today, I have to do a couple of things. Let me grab my to-do list because I also want to write it down so that I don't forget. Chores wise, I need to change my bedding. I need to throw away some trash. Queen. <laughs> if the weather allows me to do it, I would love to go on a little like 20 to 30 minute walk just to stretch my legs. But today it's studying day, so sometimes. I, I know it's necessary to have a good like physical exercise on days where you are constantly sitting by your desk, but because of stress and time pressure, I hope that I'll be able to do that, but we don't know. Tomorrow, I have my final for clinical psychology, which is the typical thing that you think of when you think of a psychologist. So basically you treat people with mental health issues. And I have learned kind of like the most global things about depression, about bipolar, about schizophrenia. But today I need to summarize my lectures on sexual dysfunctions. I need to summarize the lecture on schizophrenia. And I need to watch, because I have not listened to this lecture yet, this uh, lecture about identity disorders, if I'm saying that correctly in, English. And that already, my friends, is, is a crap ton of work. And I need to relearn my previous lectures as well because I have summarized the other 10 lectures too. It's just, it's, 
intense. Oh, and I need to hand in an assignment for a different course, which needs to be handed in tomorrow. But first, before we're gonna like get to this to-do list, which I really need to do, I have some really amazing personal news that I just think is so fun. Okay, let me share. <laughs> okay, I'll give you a hint, but I don't think you'll get the hint, but I'll, I'll give you one. Hi, I'm your new bookseller. <laughs> okay, I'm not a bookseller, but I work at Brusse right now, which is just a dream come true for every single book lover. If you have followed my vlogs for the past couple of months, I went book shopping at Brusse very, very often. I study in Utrecht, which is a city right in the middle of the Netherlands. And I mean, maybe I'm biased, but they have one of the most beautiful bookstores in the Netherlands. There, I said it. <laughs> so yeah, I started working there last week. So for those of you who are from the Netherlands and if you live in Utrecht, come to Brusse and perhaps you'll see me at the cash register. I'm so happy and also because because of them, I can do a little book haul. <laughs> it's not gonna be really beneficial for my shelves um, that I work there because I also get an employee discount. I got two books yesterday because we have this like shelf in the canteen and there are like damaged books over there. So they cannot go up for sale anymore. But if you're an employee and you're interested in getting them, you can just like email the store manager and you'll get books for free. So the first one that I saw, I was so happy because this is one of my favorite YA contemporary authors and I have been meaning to buy this book from her. And then I saw it on the bookshelf. And that is The Places I've Cried in Public by Holly Bourne. This is one of her standalones and you follow Amelie. She fell hard for Reese and she's basically trying to get get over him and she's starting to realize that he wasn't that great of a boyfriend and to kind of like revisit her relationship and kind of like think about all the shitty moments that she also had with Ree. She goes to the places that she has cried in public. And then the other one that I saw is The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton. I think this was his debut novel and it is a murder mystery and it sounds so cool. At a party thrown by her parents, Evelyn Hardcastle will be killed again. She's been murdered hundreds of times and each day Aidan Bishop is too late to save her. The only way to break the cycle is to identify Evelyn's killer, but every time the day begins again, Aidan wakes in the body of a different guest and someone is desperate to stop him ever escaping Blackheath. It sounds really interesting. I believe it has kind of like mixed reviews on Goodreads, but the premise just sounds so weird, a little bit different than like your usual uh, thriller murder mystery because of like reincarnation. Not really, but kind of. I'm just very excited, but let's stop talking about books and get to learning because otherwise the day will be over and I will not have completed any of my to-do list chores. <laughs> done everything from my to-do list which is the best feeling in the world. I booked a space at the university library though because I really need to revise a lot of the things because I still don't know or like remember a lot of the terms which I will definitely need to remember when I have the final. So I booked a space from 6 30 until 9 30 but will I use the full three hours? I doubt it. <laughs> I made some tomato orzo for dinner with some sauteed or like charred tomatoes and some sweet red pepper. And there's a bunch of buffalo mozzarella that I put on there as well. I don't know whether my camera will stay there. Okay, good evening. I went to the library a couple of hours ago. I thought I was gonna study until like 8.30, but it actually became 9.15, so yeah. But I did study a lot today and it was actually so, so productive. I got everything done, what was on my to-do list, so I'm so proud of that. And this is me sending you positive vibes to be able to do the same, and if not, 
it's totally fine as well. I sometimes also just write relatively simple things that I want to do on my TBR, on my TBR, on my to-do list so that I feel productive, such as like doing the laundry or sometimes even doing the dishes. Just write down things that are achievable as well because I sometimes feel like if you put big things on a to-do list, sometimes it can feel like such a big like boundary that you have to cross in order to like fulfill those things. So write down smaller things as well. I came back after that and I just like plopped down on my reading chair and watched Stranger Things. I'm currently on episode five, I think, of my rewatch of season three. So I think I'm gonna finish watching that and then go to bed because it is already like 11.30 and my final is tomorrow at 11. I should, however, maybe read some in the book that I'm currently reading, which is The Stationery Shop. I'm having a little bit of the struggles with the pronunciation of these names. So if I'm butchering it, I'm so sorry, but we follow our main character, Roya, and she's a very idealistic teenager living in 1953 Tehran. And there's some political upheaval going on, but she also finds herself in a literary oasis in Mr. Fahri's neighborhood stationery shop. And then Mr. Fahri, with a keen instinct for a budding romance, introduces who to his other favorite customer, handsome Bachman, who has a burning passion for justice and a love for Rumi's poetry, and Roya loses her heart at once. Their relationship blossoms, and the little stationery shop remains their favorite place in all of Tehran. A few short months later, on the eve of their marriage, Roya agrees to meet Bachman at the town square, but suddenly violence erupts, a result of the coup that forever changes their country's future. In the chaos, Bachman never shows. For weeks, Roya tries desperately to contact him, but her efforts are fruitless. Reluctantly, she moves on to college in California to another man to a life in New England until a chance encounter nearly 60 years later gives her the opportunity to ask him the questions that have haunted her for more than half a century. Why did you leave? Where did you go? How is it that you were able to forget me? I'm one third of the way through and until so far, this is a story that like when I'm reading it, I am enjoying it. But when I'm not reading it, I find it difficult to pick up. You know what I mean? So I don't have like the urge to really read right now in the evenings, which is a shame because it would be good for my eyes, but I'm gonna watch Stranger Things instead and hopefully nail that final. Thank you so much for being here with me today. It was a pleasure to have you. <laughs> You've been keeping me sane throughout this day of being alone and needing to work on my school stuff, so. Thank you for that. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking somewhere here on the screen or in the button down below. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.